Greetings! In this video, we will discuss texture painting on a three-dimensional object. We'll use Maya's own paint effects. In the coming weeks, we'll learn how to export a UV map, take that into a third-party application like Photoshop, use the tools in Photoshop to paint the texture, and then bring that back to Maya. This week's lesson, we'll be using Maya's internal paint package called Paint Effects, and we'll be painting directly on our three-dimensional object. As a warm-up, let's just create a basic uh, polygon and we'll, we'll go through the process of painting on it. Our very first step is to save the scene. If your scene isn't saved, then Maya doesn't know where to put your texture. So the first thing that you'll want to do is save the scene. And we're just practicing, playing, so uh, right, naming conventions and that, those types of things don't really matter. Um, let's create. A sphere, say for instance, and I'll grab my scale tool and we'll just scale that up. It doesn't really matter matter the size. Remember that your F key allows you to focus, and I'll just hit my Q key to come back to select. Um, we need to assign a material so that that texture can be applied to the color channel of the material. Note here that materials and textures may sound the same, but materials have to do with the surface quality of the object. Uh, is it shiny? Is it reflective? Is it transparent? Is it rough? Those types of surface material qualities are listed under a material or a shader. Though material or the shader will have a texture plugged into the color channel. And let's we need to make both of those things here in order for this to work. So first we'll assign our material. We're going to right click the selected poly primitive and we'll pull down to assign new material. So I'm right clicking and I've pulled down to assign new material. Now there's a great big list of materials and let me mention we're going to be using Maya software and we're going to be using Maya materials for this particular project. There are other render engines and in this version of Maya a third-party render engine that's been uh, incorporated is Arnold. Arnold has its own materials uh, and we will talk about Arnold rendering uh, during the second half of the semester. The first half of the semester, to keep it simple, we'll be using Maya software render engine, and therefore we'll be using uh, Maya materials. We'll simplify it further by limiting ourselves, at least here initially during the first few weeks, to Blinn, Lambert, or Fong material. Blinn is a good starting point for metal. Uh, Lambert is just a flat surface. And Fong is a good starting point for plastic types of materials, or shiny, uh, glassy, glossy type of material. Uh, just because we're painting and we don't want to see any sheen, let's go ahead and choose Lambert. Quick review, I right-clicked, I pulled down to Assign New Material, and I chose Lambert. If your Attribute Editor isn't open, let's say, for instance, your channel box was, was what was sitting here, note you can come to the Attribute Editor. And what you see in the attribute editor is for whatever you have selected. So if I click off that, there's nothing in my attribute editor. But as soon as I select the object, I see it. Your material is typically the furthest out to the right. Uh, and because we don't have any uh, other tabs in here, we could just click on it. But sometimes you'll have additional tabs, and uh, getting out to Lambert might take you a few clicks. In that case, you'd want to right-click the object and pull down to Material Attributes. So a moment ago, we right-clicked and pulled down to Assign New Material. Now I want to get back to that material, so I'll right-click and pull down to Material Attributes. And it opens right into the Attribute Editor, right? Channel Box, Mullen Toolkit, Attribute Editor. Click back on that, and we'll see that there. Uh, if we were to name this, right, uh, I could call this My Material, let's say My Material 1. And let's just demonstrate, uh, we can change a material uh, attribute here, in this case, the color. So now I've got this uh, blue sphere. If I click it and my attribute editor is open and uh, the material was the last thing I had selected, it'll pop up here. Uh, if you say you're working in Channel Box or the Modeling Toolkit and you want to jump back quickly, right click, pull down to Material Attributes. It'll automatically open. Oops! It'll automatically open the material in the attribute editor, and we can see that there. My material one, and there is my uh, blue channel that I've just selected. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, it, well, let me mention. So here are right here's a whole long list of material attributes. 
We we're talking about the color channel. Each one of those attributes has a black and white checker, which represents a map. And we can map information or pictures. We can map uh, uh, various nodes, inputs, and outputs into the channels here. What we're doing today is mapping a two-dimensional texture that we'll be painting in just a moment, and that will be mapped into this color channel. Now, if you had painted it externally, let's say you painted it in Photoshop, you would click here on this map and go out and locate the file. But we're creating the file internally, so the workflow is a little bit different. I have this selected, and we'll change modes. We'll come over here, and we'll switch to rendering. We'll find our 3D paint tool in the rendering mode. So I'll click there. And under texture, the very first uh, command is 3D paint tool. And we'll open the dialog box. So I'm in the rendering mode. I have my objects selected. That's important, right? We want to have the object selected because when we open the 3D paint tool, whatever is selected is what it will paint on. So make sure your object is selected. Rendering mode, texturing, 3D paint tool dialog box. And this opens up. Now, if you haven't already placed your tools over here, it will open up independently. And if you like working with your windows uh, free floating, that's, that's fine. Uh, I like to have it uh, located over here. So I'm going to slide this until we see that blue line, and then now we've, we've placed it there. I'm going to minimize my outliner just by clicking there, right? So we can minimize and maximize these windows just by clicking on their name. So I've minimized the outliner, and I've got my tool settings docked here, so it's easy to see, easy to find. And the very first thing we have to do is assign our texture. And that will map our work into this, uh, into this color channel here. You can see as soon as I hit Assign Edit Textures, well, not as soon, we have to define the size. Now, in terms of size, uh, 1024 is fine, 512 would be fine. We're just practicing playing around. But I uh, oftentimes get the question, what size should my texture be? And that's always a, uh, a function of how far the object or texture is from the camera and what the camera's output resolution is. Uh, kind of just a, a tangent here on why storyboard is so important. When you have a clear finished storyboard, then you know where all the objects in the scene are in proximity to the camera, and you can then calculate what the texture size should be relative to the camera position, relative to the camera output resolution. But for today, we're just playing and learning. Uh, 512 or 1024 would be fine. And we'll use it as a JPEG just out of good habit because sometimes you might start painting in Maya and then you want to open it in Photoshop. And uh, Photoshop will open your, your JPEG, your Maya generated JPEG just fine. So 1024 JPEG will hit assign. And now we can paint directly on here. Right? I can paint directly on that surface. Uh, I'm going to undo this, and what's a little bit quirky with the paint effects is we have to hit the Z key three times in order to undo. That has to do with how the stroke is laid down according to Maya. Um, but just the takeaway is to undo, you have to hit it three times or hit the uh, undo icon up here. Now, the main command for painting is just the size of your brush. So if I hold down the B key and pull the left mouse button to the right, I'm making the brush larger. And if I hold down the B key and pull the left mouse button to the left, uh, it's getting smaller. So I can make very fine strokes, and I can make uh, very large, thick strokes. Um, but that is just for painting. Uh, there are lots of instances when you just need a black and white map. Uh, black and white or grayscale mapping um, is something that we'll talk more about. And that has to do with the non-color channel attributes. Here we're painting uh, a colored attribute, so we probably want to use the paint effects brushes. Let me mention a few things here. Uh, there is flood, so right. let's say I didn't want this blue anymore. I could just hit flood, and whatever color I have selected here, it will flood at that color. Uh, I'm just going to go back to white, and we'll flood that. And then we're painting. Uh, this is technically called artisan when we're just using the brushes in Maya to paint. A, the little uh, standard generic paint package is called Artisan. We're going to use the more robust paint package, self-contained uh, paint effects. And there is so much that you can do with paint effects, uh, not only 2D, but in 3D as well. And we're going to talk about paint effects throughout the semester. 
uh, and how we can create three-dimensional objects from paint effects. This week we're using paint effects to paint 2D though, um, and it's as straightforward as most paint packages are. How do we access that? Well, it's this icon up here. It's under paint effects, and I believe that's a butterfly coming out of a paint can, or maybe those are brushes. I'm not sure, but this little icon here. Uh, click it, and it will open what's called the visor, and the visor has a ton of folders. For this week's lesson, uh, we want to restrict ourselves to the uh, kind of traditional media. You have markers here, and you can see if I grab that, I'm painting with this marker. We have oils, uh, and we can paint with our oil paints. We have pastels. We have pencils. Uh, let's say charcoal. We have pens, and we have, sorry, uh, uh, watercolor. Now, if you saw some of those windows that I accidentally selected, those don't sound like traditional painting materials. And that's because uh, some of these are more applicable to a three-dimensional object. As, and as we're seeing here, these kind of traditional uh, folders are more akin uh, to, to traditional media. So we can um, paint, and what I'd like you to do is just get in here and uh, experiment with uh, using these tools to paint. And if we just, I'm just laying down some color because I want to show you um, how we can blend these together. Because these are just coming out pretty straightforward. How could you blend these things together? You can come up to airbrush. And then we've got the ability to smear this. And you can get some real uh, painterly effects uh, from using these various smear uh, algorithms that you see here. Now I'm just having fun finger painting, uh, but you can see that's painting on the three-dimensional object. And uh, I don't know that we would ever want to paint this, but uh, uh, it's an opportunity for you to get in here and get familiar with these uh, brushes and also just to be able to change the size of your brush. Now, uh, because we're just playing and experimenting, I'll point out you can come and grab any of these uh, so right there we're painting skin here, uh, kind of funny, painting, uh, painting steak, I guess. You've got, um, right, uh, fun things here. Here's some Christmas lights. And now that seems kind of funny to be painting these as two-dimensional. As I said, some of these are more applicable towards three-dimensional, uh, and some uh, are more to 2D. I'm going to hide this guy, um, or let's, let's just move him out of the way and let's say flowers because uh, eventually we're going to create trees and shrubs and grasses uh, etc and we'll be doing that in 3d and if we look here you can see I've painted a set of 3d flowers right and we'll talk about how to change these I'm kind of a stickler for not using the paint effects uh, in 3d straight out of the box you want to customize those and we'll Go to great effort to customizing our trees and our flowers and our grasses, etc. But just so it's not confusing, some of these are more geared towards 3D and some are more geared towards 2D. Um, so, right here we are. When we're done, what we want to do is um, save that texture. Now, I've clicked off, right? I've clicked off, and when I click back on, I don't have my tool settings anymore. I have to go back and reselect that. So again, in the rendering mode, I have to come back and reselect the 3D paint tool. And when I open the dialog box, it opens back up and I'm back in business uh, for painting. I'm gonna undo three times. And don't forget to bring your visor back for the paint effects. I'll click here and um, we can come and we're back in business for painting. Right. So this is just a warm up. You're not turning this in. Uh, it's just a warm up so that you're prepared uh, for this week's actual lesson, which is the sugar skull sculpt and paint. Um, before I let you go, though, let's just talk about how you'll be turning that particular project in. Uh, we want to 
save the texture. And if you haven't saved your file, it's going to tell you that you need to save the file. So your file is saved. You hit save texture. And what that, what that means is the next time you open Maya, it will know where everything is. But let's render this out. Um, up here is your render button. So this little kind of like a Hollywood clapboard, not the one with the eye and not the one that says IPR, but the one right in between. When I go to render that, it renders it out a default. Now it's on a black background and it's rendered at a very low quality. So let's just change two things. Let's change the background to white, since that's what I'm asking you to do with your skull sculpt paint. And uh, let's increase the quality and then let's save it as a JPEG. So we're going to do those three things. We're going to make the background white, we're going to uh, bump up the quality of the render, and then we're going to save it out as a JPEG. I'm going to come to the outliner, select the perspective, go ahead and close my paint effects here. And uh, let's say you didn't have your attribute editor open. Right, we click it here. Here is the icon for the attribute editor. And this is my camera. Right, my perspective camera. It's the one I'm looking through. And if I scroll down to environment, we can make that background any color we want. Uh, this week's lesson, you'll be rendering on a white background. And so now when we render, we see that that's on white. We're going to create a light. Um, and we're going to spend this semester, uh, we'll really spend some time talking about lighting. Uh, Good lighting makes or breaks. You can have a simple model with good lighting and people will be impressed. You can have a great model with poor lighting and uh, people might question the quality of the image. So lighting is one of those things that can make or break a project and we will uh, discuss lighting in depth uh, as the semester progresses. But for this particular project, we're just gonna use one light, an ambient light, which will just give us a diffused, um, a, a diffused, um, luminance in the scene. The reason being uh, we want to see your skull sculpt texture so we're not uh, we're not going to do any kind of interesting lighting because all we want to do is see see your texture. So we'll create the light, create light and we're using an ambient. Remember we're using the Maya software engine. We'll be using the Maya software materials because of that and also the Maya lights. The other render engine, Arnold, has its own lights and its own um, materials, but it will also render Maya. So Maya won't render Arnold. Arnold will render Maya. So you can always get away with using Maya materials and lights, uh, but there are things that the Arnold lights and the Arnold materials can do that uh, uh, Maya can't. So we'll say lights ambient. And here it is over here. If, if you're a sphere, was still sitting back. Let me set this back where it was, just at the origin. Origin is translate XYZ zero. So I created that light and I don't see it. You might say, where is it? If I hit the four key, right, I can see that it's in there. Also note, if you come back and hit five, right, five is shaded, but not textured. And the six key is what gives us that texture. It's also this icon here, the little black and white, uh, right, we can turn that off. Or turn that on to get the texture. So four wire, five shaded, six is our textured. And I've created this ambient light. I can't see it, but I can use my outliner. I can just pick that ambient light and pull that up and pull it uh, forward. We just want to, uh, as I mentioned, just a diffused illuminance uh, of, of the object. And if I click render, now we see we've got that white background. Maybe we want this a little bit more in the front, right? So not dynamic lighting at all. We'll talk about dynamic lighting as the semester progresses, but we just want to see your texture. So there I've got that set. And uh, the quality was the other thing that we wanted to change. So with a simple sphere like this, um, quality is, is sufficient. But let me just show you. Uh, because with our skull sculpt and that very intricate texture, we will definitely want to increase this. So right here is how we render, uh, right there. And not IPR, but if you go one more out, you've got the render settings. It's that Hollywood clapboard type of icon with a little gear, a little blue gear. Again, we're rendering my software. If you look there, there's software, hardware, hardware 2.0, vector, and Arnold render. 
And we will do um, each of those this semester. We'll hardware, vector, Arnold, and as we're doing right now, Maya software. So you'll learn all of those. We're primarily this semester using Maya software. In the second and third semester, we get deeper into Arnold rendering. The Maya software always has two tabs. So uh, the Maya software tab itself at the very top is where we will find the ability to change the quality. So it was at preview quality, it renders very quickly. And then we'll switch this to production quality. And now when you render it, and it may be a little bit, uh, on your screen at home you'll be able to see it, but seeing this through YouTube you might not appreciate the, uh, the quality difference there. But that's what we want to do. Uh, we want to have a white background. Right? We went to perspective, we opened the attribute editor, we came down to environment, we made it white. We created an ambient light, and we placed that ambient light uh, just right in front of where we were rendering. We just have a kind of a boring, diffused lighting setup, but that's okay. Uh, you also want to make this uh, fit, the, fit the screen. You don't want to render, right? Sometimes students will turn something in like rendered way back there. We can't, we can't see it. So you can turn on your resolution gate, which is this icon here. And that shows you what you're going to be rendering. So I can pull that in. Uh, we came to render settings and we came to the Maya software tab and we chose production quality. And then if we want to change the dimensions, I believe I have you render at 2K square for that skull. And so here are the dimensions of 2K. And this will take a moment to render but we have a nice big uh, version. Now you're not turning this in. Uh, this is just practice warm up just to get you used to the process and the tools. Uh, you're turning in your skull sculpt paint, um, but you're turning it in on a white background with a single ambient light, production quality, 2K square. Once you've done all that, how do you save the rendered image? We come to File, Save Image, and uh, I've got a folder here with a bunch of stuff in it. Just title it, uh, and let's you can put that back to your desktop. Um, several of you had questions, where does it save to? You've got a, uh, in your documents folder, uh, there's a Maya folder, projects, default, and then a series of subfolders, and that's where your scene is being saved to. Uh, but you can save your render wherever you want. Uh, I recommend if you don't have a system, just save it to the desktop, upload it, and then you can take that off the desktop and archive it wherever you'd like on your local computer. Remember that it's always your last name, first name, and if you want to tell us what it is, um, you know, your skull sculpt, you can write that in there. It's the JPEG, and you want to make sure that you have save color managed image. We will talk about color management, raw versus sRGB uh, as the semester progresses. But just for now, uh, choose Save Color Managed Image, and you can hit Save. If you select a desktop, it'll save it right to the desktop, and you'll drag that up to Canvas. Just note again, you're not turning this in. You're turning in the Skull Sculpt Paint. Uh, this was just a warm-up and walk-through of the process. Okay questions in the tech discussion forum. Look forward uh, to this project. Uh, we typically get lots of good results from the students. Um, so let me know if you have questions.